Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown coming with our word for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are continuing in the book of Romans, and we are finishing up chapter 15, the third section of this chapter. We have gone through Romans, um, almost completing it, but we are in chapter 15 doing the third section part of three parts, right? And I just want to remind you to look below, get the information for our morning prayer. If you've not been joining us, this is spiritual impact training. This is spiritual workouts with prayer and scripture. And so you want to make sure that if you're able, that you are joining us in the mornings, Monday through Friday for our prayer, because then you come on here, you get the word. So you got your scripture and your word, your scripture and your prayer rather. And so you are putting it together and then doing your own spiritual workout because we are are on assignment. We are on a mission. We have work to do. We are standing against the wiles of the devil. We are fighting for the family. We are standing against the enemy. We are standing on the word of God. We are impacting those around us. We are turning the world upside down, but we have to have the word in us because the word is power, right? The word is alive, is quick, is powerful, is cleansing us, changing us, healing us, delivering us, and strengthening us. And so I encourage you, get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible so that we can go and we can wrap up this third part of Romans chapter 15, okay? We left off the last time, I believe, we left off in verse 22. We did verse 22. Now we are doing the third portion of it. If you missed the other sessions, please go back and review. Go back um, and check it out and so that you can pull all of this together. But we, last uh, session, we're talking about how, uh, why Paul even wrote this letter. We know he wrote many letters or what's called epistles, but those are letters to the various churches. And this one is to the Roman church. And we know that it was a mixture of people, you know, Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor and all different, you know, all coming together. And he's, you know, talking about uh, not being a stumbling block, how we're supposed to treat each other, how we're supposed to deny ourselves so that others, you know, can be blessed and so that others don't fall, that we're not a stumbling block to them. And our last session, we talked about uh, Paul being ambitious uh, about preaching the gospel to those that have not heard. So he's telling them, listen, you know, I've been wanting to come to you, right? He says, in fact, he said, my visit to you has been delayed so long because I've been preaching in these places. What places? The places where they haven't heard because he was telling and now listen, my ambition, this is the NLT, he was saying, my ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard rather than where a church was, has already been started by somebody else. He said, I ain't trying to run to another church where there's already people being ministered to, already people being saved. He said, I want to go where ain't nobody heard it. And that's what we were um, doing for our memory verse is that we need to be enthusiastic. We need to strive to go and preach the gospel to those that have not heard, those that are, are not saved, those that are bound, whether it's local, whether it's overseas, whether it's down the street, wherever it is, we may not be able to travel like Paul did, right? But we are able to go to the unsaved. That's what we've been called for. That's what we've been chosen for. That's what we've been anointed for. And so we are going to verse 23. And again, don't forget that there's an e-booklet available if you need some inspiration, some guidance, some scriptures for your uh, spiritual regimen to help you get on task so that you're doing your spiritual workouts. That link is underneath this YouTube video as well. And so we are going right in right now. I, I, I am going to open us up in prayer and we'll begin in verse 23 of Romans 15. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we honor you and we bless your holy name, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. We thank you for ministering to us individually and collectively, feeding us that we will be full and an overflow, that you are giving us living water, Lord God. Father, that we are going and we are boiling over, Lord God. Everywhere we go, we can't contain it, that we're sharing the gospel, the good news, the truth, the word of God. Father, that men, women, and children will want to know what must they do to be saved. Help us, God, that we are turning the world up side down, that we are making an impact and bringing glory to your name. We yield ourselves to you now. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are beginning in verse 23. And he is continuing because we were talking about why he wrote this letter and he's telling them, right? And now he's saying in verse 23, but now I have finished my work. Oh, wait a minute. That's the NLT. I better read it first of the King James. Hold on a second. 
all that. You know, I like to break it down. So sometimes I go to the Amplified, sometimes the NLT after I've read the King James. Or, you know, I want to make sure with all our getting, you get understanding, right? That's what the word says. So verse 23 in the King James. But now having no more place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, whensoever I take my journey unto Spain, I will come to you. For I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you. If first I be somewhat filled with your company, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia, Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints, which are at Jerusalem. It had pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. Now, let me break this down because it's saying, he's saying, now that I've finished my work in these regions, right? And after all these long years of waiting, I'm eager to visit you. Because remember the last session, he was saying, I've been wanting to come to you. He said, but I've been delayed because I'm taking the gospel to places they ain't never heard it. So he's saying, I'm planning to go to Spain. And when I do, I'm going to stop off in Rome. And after I have enjoyed your fellowship for a little while, you can provide for my journey. He says, but before I come, I, he says, I'm going to Jerusalem to take a gift to the believers there. For you see the believers in Macedonia and Achaia have eagerly taken up an offering for the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. They were glad to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them because since the Gentiles received the spiritual blessings of the good news from the believers in Jerusalem, they feel the least they can do in return is to help them financially. So they're saying, listen, he's saying in Macedonia and Achaia, Macedonia and Achaia, they took up this offering for the poor believers in Jerusalem because they feel like as Gentiles, they received the gospel because of those believers in Jerusalem. So they feel like the least they can do is help the poor there. So they were eager to take up an offering and to give it because they feel indebted to them. Too. They wanted to do something in return for their salvation, for them hearing the good news, the gospel. So in verse 28, it tells us, when therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. And I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the God of the spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may be with you be refreshed and, and may with you be refreshed now the God of peace be with you all amen now i want to look at this in the amplified beginning in verse 28 and this is what the Amplified says. And we're just breaking this down, fine-tuning it. That's what the Amplified does it. Add some extra words in there because it's breaking down the words for us. So it makes it plain. He's saying in verse 28, as soon as I've delivered this money and completed this good deed of theirs, I'll come to you on my way to Spain. So he's saying after I take this money to Jerusalem, to the poorer saints, those that are in need from the people of Macedonia and Achaia, He's saying, after I've done this good deed of theirs, after I've completed it, he says, I'm going to come to you on my way to Spain. And I'm sure that when I come, Christ will richly bless us together. We're going to be refreshed together when I get there. He says, dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to join in my struggle by praying to God for me. Now, this is something we need to be doing for one another. Now, he was going about as a missionary. He was going and starting churches and preaching to those that are unsaved, those that had never heard the gospel. He was going forth doing the work uh, that he was given and anointed to do by the Spirit of God. But he's asking for prayer. We have to pray for one another's strength. We have to pray for one another's favor as we're preaching the gospel, ministering to the lost. The prayer is key because he's saying, Join in the struggle with me by praying to God for me. This is a battle. Remember, we're in spiritual warfare. We have to pray, praise, and preach. And so we have to stand in the gap one for another. 
And we know that many that are going and preaching the gospel even now face opposition when it's not, especially when it's not here locally, when it's overseas where it's forbidden. But even here, there is opposition. There's so many faiths and so many gods and so many doctrines and so many false prophets that when we speak the truth, the enemy comes back. Works of darkness, people in opposition come back. And so we have to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and stand on the truth. And we need to pray one for another that we don't get weary and well-doing. And so it says, do this because of your love for me given to you by the Holy Spirit. He's saying you have the spirit of God in you. And because you do, you ought to love me and pray for me. And he's saying in verse 31 in the Amplified, pray that I will be rescued from those in Judea who refuse to obey God. Now remember, there are those that we may minister to and preach to that may not receive. They may be in opposition to. Remember how Paul himself, when he was Saul, persecuted the church. He was coming and imprisoning them and binding them up and, you know, and, and looking for them. He was dragging them out of their houses. So now he faces the same type of persecution because he's been beaten, he's been stoned, he's been in prison. And so he's saying, pray that I'll be rescued from those in Judea who refuse to obey God. That's how we have to pray for one another. We have to pray for missionaries, evangelists, those that are going about and preaching the gospel and ministering to the lost. And we too should be doing that. And he says, pray also that the believers there will be willing to accept the donation I'm, take, I'm taking to Jerusalem. Then, by the will of God, I'll be able to come to you with a joyful heart. And we will be an encouragement to each other. This is how we're supposed to encourage one another. Do what it is God told you to do the way he told you to do it. Pray for our brothers and sisters that are doing what God has called and purposed them to do. Paul was called to go and preach this gospel to those that hadn't heard, to go to places where it hasn't been spoken, hasn't been preached. But he needs people to pray for him, to strengthen him, to give him favor, to protect him. And we too have to do that for one another. But what has God called you to do? Where is he sending you to preach the gospel, to minister? And so then he's saying, then we can come together. And we can be an encouragement to one another as we're doing what God has called us to do. We are able to come together as a body. We are able to come together as believers and encourage one another, edify one another, lift up one another because we're on assignment. And so that was the NLT, those last couple of verses that I read. But he's saying, I urge you by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the spirit to join together with me in prayers to God on my behalf and pray that I'll be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my service to Jerusalem will be accepted to the saints, Jewish believers there, so that by God's will, I can come to you with joy and find rest in your company. And so we come together to edify, to encourage one another. But we have to not forget the work. See, oftentimes now the church is coming together and having that good time and encouraging each other and resting each other and having the programs and events and getting excited about church, but not doing the work. We have to go do the work and then we can come together and in refreshing, encourage one another so we can continue on the journey and continue on the call and continue in the work. But we come together to get equipped to do the work of the ministry. Paul was like, I haven't been there before. I was delayed because I was on assignment. I was preaching to those that had not heard. And now I'm over here getting ready to complete this assignment. And when I complete this assignment, well, I'm going to do it. You pray for me that I'm able to do it, that I'm rescued from those that don't believe, that I can complete the assignment that I'm going on. Then I'm going to come and see you. Then we can have a time of refreshing. Then we can encourage one another. And that's what we do. Do what God called you to do. It's not just about going to church. It's about us doing what God called us to do. Then we can come together. Then we can be edified. Then we can be lifted up. In fact, look with me real quickly in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I want you just to write down these verses of scripture. So you can go back and look at them because in Ephesians chapter four, when it's talking about one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one father of all who is above all, through all and in all. That's verses four, uh, five and six. But then we go down right to verse 11, Ephesians four, beginning in verse 11. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? Verse 
12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fit joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Listen, that's a long sentence, but I got to break it down for you in the NLT. I've got to go to the NLT because I want you to see this because church is not well, we have made it in many cases a place of, you know, just coming together, having a good time and yelling and shouting and, you know, and, and, and just coming together in fellowship. It is good. But what are we really coming for? Let's look at this in Ephesians chapter 4. And I just want to look at the New Living Translation real quick before we sign off today. Because I want you to get this. I want you to know what it's all about. Because people say, well, we got to go to church. I can't wait to get back to church. And we run, you know, blah, 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 blah. But what are we going for? What is the purpose? Paul was taking care of his ministry work. Then he said we can come together and encourage one another. But this is what it is telling us. In the... Um, in the NLT is saying in verse 11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who's the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So the purpose of going to church, it's not for the programs and the events. It's not just to have a good time and fellowship because we want to just be encouraged. And I want a blessing today and all of these other things that people are going for, trying to gain money and position and title and things and material things that perish. But the, but the gifts that Christ has given to the church is so that the, the, the responsibility, excuse me, <laughs> the responsibility is to equip the people of God to do the work, to build up the church, the body of Christ. So we come together in unity so that we are a body that is working together. Each one doing his own special work, each person operating in their gift, each person walking in boldness, walking in truth, knowing the word of God. So we're rooted and we're grounded and we are one and we are whole and we are together and no more mature. We're not like children. We're not like babies. We're not tossed about when new teachings come about. We're not influenced when people are proper lying to us, saying things that sound good, but there's no scripture to back it up. But we are walking in truth, grounded in firm foundation in the word of God and in our faith. And so it is all about us growing together. That is what it's all about. Teaching sound doctrine, the truth, the word of God. Stop being moved by fancy words and things that, that sound good and that rhyme and that come together. And, you know, people mixing worldly things with the word. People mixing uh, teachings of the wor world with the teachings of God and mixing spiritual and natural together. And it sounds good and it feels good and people are falling in. No, those gifts were given to the church so that we can grow and be equipped so the truth is going forth and the church is being built the spiritual things the powerful things that are built on the word of God Jesus Christ our foundation our cornerstone that's it and so we have to grow in the word and so 
Paul did his ministry. And then he said, when I'm done doing that, when I preach to those that haven't heard, right? When I have been able to share the gospel, the good news, when I have completed the assignments that have been given me, then I'll come. And so this is what we need to remember. We're on assignment. What has God called you to do? Where has he called you to go? Who are you waiting for to let you go, to release you to do the things God has already ordained you to do, called you to do, purpose for you to do? Are you being sidetracked by the programs, the events, man's doctrine, spiritual and re or religious uh, uh, spirits and man's doctrine? Are you being, are you deviating from what God has called you to do because you're caught up in the things that sound good and feel good to the flesh and itching ears? Let's make sure we're walking in assignment and we won't get distracted or deterred. We're here on purpose and intentional. And so we're going to close out in prayer. Meditate on the verses in Ephesians. Actually, I would I would uh, encourage you to read Ephesians verse 1 all the way through verse 16. 1 through 16, and then the last part of Romans 15 that we went over today as we begin um in verse 23 all the way to the end. And so I encourage you, uh, study to show yourself approved. Meditate on this. And your memory verse, your memory verse, your memory verse, your memory verse is, your memory verse is, your memory verse is, not going to be in Romans. It's going to be in the verses in Ephesians. And it's going to be um, verses 11 and 12. 11 and 12. And so um, that's your memory verse. Get this word on the inside. We're going to close out in prayer. Don't forget to share these messages with somebody who may benefit, somebody who wants to stay in the word daily, who can join us uh, and get this word and go back and study and meditate and apply. Amen. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice in you gladly. We honor you. We thank you for this day that you've given us another opportunity to study your truth, to grow thereby. Lord God, no longer to be spiritual babies and children. Lord God, tossed to and fro immature, but help us to grow. Help us to eat the meat. Help us to grow spiritually and to produce spiritual fruit and to turn the world upside down, to be effective, Lord God. Father, doing the things you called and purposed us to do. Not being distracted, but focused on you. Our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the often finish of our our faith. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, to grow, Lord God, Father, in the things you have purposed for us to do, that we're using our gifts for your glory, that we're doing the special work you've called us to do without distraction, without hesitation, and without fear. And so, God, we thank you for what you're doing in us, through us, and for us. We pray that we walk in our healing and deliverance. And, Father, that we're abiding in Christ, walking in your word, led by your spirit. And we give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you once again. I love you to life. I will see you the next time on our sit-ups.